115 amps, five hours to charge. Now I need to get this outside. I will see if I can find a clock spring at the wrecker next week. The rest of this week is going to be spent. Time to get back to work on the 8.8 .8 axle. Need to start getting that completed. It's already burning up my time. I got about another month and a half before I want to start looking for a job for the winter time. But I need to get the cooler out of this as well and swap it out with the other one. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with this cooler at all. Works extremely well. The reason why I'm swapping it out for the other one. One is its size. It's extremely huge. Takes up a lot of space in the JK. And it uses tons of power. Too much power for me. If I want that EcoFlow Delta to run all weekend, I'll be able to do things like charge my CPAP battery, run the coffee maker, charge all my camera equipment, lights, anything else along those lines. I need something that's more efficient on power. That's why I'm swapping back over to the Dometic, the one I've bought a few years ago. Holds the temperature really well and doesn't use too much power. So I'll take it out on my next trip and then I'm going to compare them both for power wise and do a final decision then. That frees up a lot of space. I can run the Delta from the side, have the window cracked open for the solar panel. That way I don't have to keep the back open all the time and worry about mice and stuff getting in because we had a mice issue last camping trip out. That's weird. Why am I locked out? Did I accidentally lock it? I guess I did. Yeah. Insulation sticker on this one here. All my compressor coolings in the front here. I think we'll be good. I'm just finally getting things set up here. This is like a, a union job taking forever. I only bought this rear end like two, three years ago. Finished that part last year and here I am. Another six to eight months later. Maybe I might even finish it. Got everything set up. Get the oven, heat up the ring gear to expand the metal, put over top of the differential. I also uh, got some barriers in the middle because that thing's pretty heavy. And if you stick it on that wire rack, well, you know what's going to happen. Got the bearings set out. The bearings and the gears are both USA standard gear. That's what I've used in all my builds. I officially have not had any issues with any of them yet, so I'm going to continue to use their products up until some point in time that maybe I won't, but uh, I've done the TJ in those gear setups. I did the JK, and now I'm going to do this 8.8 .8 axle. I don't need these bearings anymore. I need these ones to make some setup bearings kept the old shims the old differential only used uh, two big thick ones got a crush sleeve eliminator that i used on the other differential this is the detroit true track in all its beautiful glory also comes with this little package right down here with little spacers cover a retaining cylinder and a snap ring you don't want to lose those it's very important now i've had one in my jeep probably the last eight nine years at least never had an issue at all i've ran my jeep stock i've ran it with a supercharger and also i got a ls vortec motor in it now and i haven't had an issue due to mainly a lot of common sense don't go stupid on the skinny pedal, and you're not going to have any issues. A couple things. I got my Detroit True Track there. I just got a file. 
And I'm just going over the bolt holes and the edge just to see if I could feel any high spots whatsoever because high spots will cause some issues. So now I just want to clean the surface with brake cleaner, remove any oils before I get ready to install it. Got the ring gear, probably the most important part. Same thing. Just making sure there's no burrs, feels good. Clean her off. Just running the tap through this one hole here. Red seem like they were a little bit funny. Anytime you're doing a thread repair, if you want to test it afterwards, use a hand ratchet because by hand you can feel if something's wrong. Power tool doesn't. Power tool just goes until it can't go anymore. Before I get started on anything. Start cleaning all the prep work. Clean it out. We're gonna clean the races. Some brake clean. Some Scotch Brite. Does a good job cleaning off the median surfaces. You want to get all that rust off too on the bottom. That rust is what's gonna cause a leak. I talked about this already before with the ARB. Got some multitasking going on, getting that prepped. Oven's heating up, getting the ring gear all set up to be mounted on the Detroit True Track. It's getting everything prepped up. Making tons of videos for my other channel, BSK Garage, where all my DIY videos go. So this is how I like to get set up. Got the wood there, so I can take the true track, set it on top. Got my ratchet here and my bolts. Now this is important, this is what I like to do. Everybody has their own method. I like to spin them in with the ratchet first, not torque down, not anything, spin it in, get all the bolts in tight so the ring gear can sit. And then once everything cools off, I take the bolts out one by one and I properly torque them and put the Loctite on them. I also got the mallet there for the installation in case I need to tap it down to make it seat. Oven should be hot enough for the ring gear. Little bit of love, it's cold, went right in. Let's try this again. I think we got her. I think we got her now. One of the problems is that the gear is so thick. There we go, we just fit it right on. Just fit it right on. I'm just gonna spin all these in right by hand. Make sure they all just 
line up nice. There. So now that will cool and shrink. Crisis adverted. I was getting kind of worried for a second that this piece wouldn't fit in, but it will. Just a little tight with that gear. Excuse me, mister. What are you doing on there? What are you doing, Doms? What are you doing on the ledge? Is this how you're rolling? I just cleaned your litter box. I did. It's all fresh for you now. Are you going to take a big dump? Are you? What are you doing? Doms. Now you're going to try to attack me on the ledge. Is that what you're doing? Sleepy heads. Uh, 100% charged. Hey, Doms. Are you ready to go in? For the heat wave? Are you? It's all the zoom I got. Not sure what that guy in the Jeep is trying to do. Looked like he was going to go down in the ditch and then he realizes that it's gated off so he can't know he's on the opposite side of the road. I don't know, maybe he's pretending that he lost something. You never know. Some people are just sketchy. Seems to be driving slow. Maybe he does have some Real mechanical issues. Oh, no, he's stopping again. Maybe he lost something. Don't know. Anyways, back inside the garage. Done playing around with the 8.8. .8, filming videos from other channel, BSK Garage. Just getting the uh, ring and pinion, or the ring gear set up on the Detroit True Track to tighten down. And this is my setup, I'm going to do it because the true track has a big hole there where you put the C-clips and all that in. Because you can't use the axle method where you put the, both the axle and the tires and put the axle through there and turn it because the way this is set up, there's no way you could lock those helical gears. So this is what I got going. I got it in the vise on this side so that when I torque it to tighten it, the leverage will be pushing against the vise and for whatever reason, if this becomes loose in the vise, I got two um, Bessie clamps with a piece of metal there so it can't come out and fall on the ground and bust off a tooth and make me sad. Let's get things set up. Let's get this done. Yeah, it didn't take much to free at all. So, so red Loctite on there. Oops. Tight. And then mark it with an X. Now everything's done. Red Loctite, torque down 80 foot pounds. Don't be shy. And the Loctite, last thing you want is these bolts to come out. Now I'm just going to get ready to press the bearings on. So I got the old bearing, and then I'm going to die grind out the race so it can slide over top easy, just in case there's some extra. And I'm going to cut 
the bearing section off and I'm gonna press on the inside of that race when I get that on. Something else too, if you drop your torque wrench, you're supposed to get it recalibrated because it could knock it out. Man, I got that GoPro on, but it's kind of giving me some, some hair horns there, eh? Hair horns. So I got the bearing. That's what I made. That way I could push on that center race, get her down. That's too funny. I just realized that when I took the bottom legs off to press the bearings on Dana 44 axle, I didn't put it together right, so it's kind of kind of got to lean. It's not going to matter for this because we're all leaned together. So let's get some lubrication on there and get ready to press that on. To make it go on easier, I'm just going to put some assembly grease. Feel the tension. We're on. Back her off. Well, I think that's where I'm going to shut it down right here for this video. I think I'm going to do a video dedicated on just setting up the gears. I think that's what a lot of people struggle with. And I find too that if you do one and then don't do another one for years, then it's a little bit different. But if you just finish one and you're gonna be doing another one, then you kind of get some ideas on how to do it differently. And I'm gonna do it differently with this one here. I got an idea and it should save a lot of time, especially uh, setting it up outside of the vehicle is gonna be a lot quicker too, because I'm not crawling from the front to the back Everything's just gonna be right there. It's gonna make it a lot quicker. Unlike with the JK here, where you have the dual tanks, the factory tank on the passenger side and the auxiliary tank on the driver's side made it really tough underneath to set it up. But I'm glad that's done. It's been working good. That's ready for the drop-in. This is all set up, torqued down. I think it's motherfucking beer time. All right, it's time to shut her down. Motherfucking beer time. I got some Sunshine Rain IPA Strong Beer. 6.7% brewed right here in Calgary, Alberta. We got everything set up for the gear install. I'm going to do the gear install in a separate video. I actually started it today. And I had this theory on how I was going to get the pinion set up. Super quick and easy, but that failed, so I wasted a few hours on that. I should have just kept it to the old true method that I've always done. Anyways, motherfucking beer time, everybody. Plugging away on progress. Sooner we can get the differential set up. Sooner we can bring the TJ in the garage. Tear the old axle out. Salvage whatever parts we need. And start building. Get that in, get those control arms built, set everything up, paint it, we're good to go. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.